Hey, Charlie, where am I? Oh! Don't let the posy fool you. I discovered W.C. Fields long after I was familiar with Chaplin, Keaton and Laurel and Hardy, and I immediately liked him best. Fields had the courage to play a disreputable character and the brilliance to make riskier and more profound jokes than the others. Fields portrayed a suspicious braggart who drank too much, lied and cheated at cards. He wasn't asking to be loved. Come on, step on it. I won't walk another step. Make him drag you, lady. He got you drunk. <laughs> but he was funny, perhaps because he mined the meaner side of human nature for his comedy. He showed us a world where people didn't always behave the way they were supposed to, and that, I think, struck a chord with Depression-era audiences. As someone once said of him, any man who hates dogs and babies can't be all bad. <whistles> William Claude Dukenfield was born on the outskirts of Philadelphia in 1880 and he learned to juggle while delivering vegetables for his father. He realized vaudeville was a way of escaping the life of a street vendor, and by the age of 25, he was acknowledged as one of the world's great jugglers. He became a star of the Ziegfeld Follies and briefly tried silent pictures. His first movie, Pool Sharks, was knockabout slapstick at its broadest but it lacked the subtle pantomime he perfected on stage. And he really didn't click in the movies until talkies came in. Come on, scram, who's Craig? Get away. I don't care. I got $50 in my bank already. You have $50 in your bank? Yes. Uh, uh, Probably has a pin sticking in there, yeah. His whiskey voice, which he played like a dusty bagpipe, perfectly suited his character. He worked his drinking into the act, and in the waning days of Prohibition became a polyp-nosed symbol of public misbehavior. The other side of Field's film persona was the downtrodden family man. His view of American home life was anything but cozy. There he goes again, down to the saloon to read that silly detective magazine. Well, all right, you've been smoking again in your room. To me, the porch sequence in It's a Gift is quintessential W.C. Fields. He's a man who just wants to be left alone. Vegetable man. Fields wrote much of his own dialogue, and he spoke in the florid style of a man who appreciates the sounds of words as much as their meanings. Well, sweet buttercup? Now that I'm here and see what's to be had, I shall dally in the valley. And believe me, I can ballet. But he refused to take credit under his own name, preferring improbable pseudonyms, Charles Bogle, Otis Cribble Cobliss, and Mahatma Kane Jeeves. Fields showed a surprising range when in 1934 he played Micawber in David Copperfield. Critics went reaching for superlatives in praising his performance. Some wondered how Dickens could possibly have created the character without Fields in mind. Approach me, approach me, you, you, you heap of infamy. And if your head is human, I'll break it. I cast off your yoke. I defy you. He went on radio in the late 1930s and by trading insults with Charlie McCarthy became fixed in the public mind as a man with a talent for abuse, a thirst for alcohol, and a nose to prove it. Ah, oh, hello, Edgar. If it isn't up, you see. The original half man, half nose way. <laughs> well, Charlie McCarthy, the woodpecker's pinup boy. Eventually, his feud with Charlie moved to the screen. Are you eating a tomato or is that your nose? 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good, Charles. You must come down with me after the show to the lumberyard and ride piggyback on the buzz saws. In the last years, Fields made some of his greatest films. He was paired memorably with Mae West in My Little Chickadee. May I? Help yourself. Would you object if I fail myself of a second helping? But he was finest on his own, a boozy old warrior with a glint in his eye and a deck of marked cards in his pocket. The Bank Dick, which he wrote and starred in at the age of 60, is a masterpiece. Fields was doing Python-esque things a long time before Python. In his last starring film, Never Give a Sucker an Even Break, he goes up in a plane unlike any ever built and exits in an equally unusual manner. At a time when political correctness often stifles our honesty and our impulse to laugh, and genuine wit is in such short supply, nothing I think could be healthier than the rediscovery of this most original, perceptive and unrepentant of comedians. I'm very fond of children, girl children, around 18 and 20. At the end of his life, he was caught by a friend one day reading the Bible. You, Bill, the friend exclaimed, reading the good book. Fields glanced up, looking for loopholes. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm John Cleese.